Bible is when we had a meeting with you. I want to call it as yet disconnect you on the situation of hospital security in this country. And uh, did give us some figures. And uh, at that particular time, you said there's no point of alarm. At least there was an armies in the country, not in the stores. Well, remember, not in the stores. What you gave us uh, being available in the store, the strategic food reserve was about 2 million bucks. But you expected maybe uh, more than 4,000 uh, 4 million bucks were almost with the farmers and with the traders. And only on the other course of rights populations. So the country and the, we as a committee, from where we sit, we are just shocked. But at least we are caught off guard that we have to reach the level and the situation that uh, we are now seeing and witnessing. So, can you tell us really, you know, from where you sit, where did the rain start beating us as a country and as a ministry? So that at least Kenyans really know and understand what went wrong, despite the fact uh, it's common knowledge to everybody that we came through a long drought, obviously we had drought, but really, uh, are we supposed to be in the situation where we are today as a country? Welcome, Mazir. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman and members of the committee. Um, I, I want to start by appreciating the kind of situation we, we are in as a, as a country as far as the, the uh, food crop is concerned, that is uh, the major. I know, as you say, Chairman, up to January we have been updating the committee on the food situation of the country. And remember the last time I had a meeting with you, Chairman, I mentioned that the food situation in the country was stable until the end of May. Um, that situation was aggravated by the fact that we had noticed that um, the rains were erratic by late last year and by January when we received, actually end of January, when we received the second season crop, it was clear that the crop had failed to perform basically because of the trouble we had hit, uh, started hitting the country. And by, um, the, normally the second season crop is in the figure of six to seven, around six, seven or eight million, depending on the, uh, the weather patterns, million packs we normally receive in the second crop. By February it was clear that we had, uh, we had a cap of almost um, six million packs as far as uh, the second season crop uh, was concerned. In total, we, we received 7 million packs as opposed to the requirements of the, of, the, of, the, of the country, which is our consumption level, which is around 42 million as we speak now. Normally, um, we are a net importer by a short margin, by a small margin as a country. What we produce, it does not balance out um, with, with the requirements we need. We've never felt the shortage because our trading block, the East African community, has encouraged a free flow of uh, commodities. And so, flow of maize from Uganda and Tanzania to the region has always been smooth. And whatever cup we've always experienced has always been filled. And so there's, there normally they use not to we use not to have any, any issue as far as uh, food situation is concerned. The drought situation, Chairman, did not only affect Kenya, it affected the region. And so Uganda could not have any maize flowing into Kenya. And you realize it even stopped any export. In the case of Uganda, what, uh, in, in the case of Uganda, what happened, because the flow usually would also come from Uganda, is that the flow in, other, in, in, in retrospect flew to, to Sudan because of the conflict in that area and there was no much uh, cropping there. And therefore, there was major competition and also non-governmental organizations who are humanitarian in nature were buying food in Uganda and actually supplying it to, to Southern Sudan. So we did uh, uh, get that... Um, cup being filled by the flow of this grain from, from, from the region. So it left us fairly to depend on what is happening, what, what we produced in the, uh, in, in the country. And so by 
Uh, the other thing I want to pick out at this point in time, knowing that we are an agricultural country and the priority of government is to encourage local industry, our major priority is to encourage our farmers to produce food. And that is why, as government, we've continued to subsidize fertilizer or general inputs to ensure that we up our production. And so the question of importation has always been the least priority for government. And so during our survey of the, 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 the availability of food in the country was showing us that um, because it depends from month to month, uh, month to month, was showing uh, that a good number of um, the grain was being held by traders and some of the big farmers for speculation purposes. Because if you remember, when we started buying the, the, the crop as government to stock our strategic food reserve, because of the weather patterns, we noticed that we needed to improve the price so that we could attract maize to our SFR um, stores. And as government, we placed our buying price at 3,000 Kenya shillings, which was the highest in the recent past. Because previously, we were buying it for 2,500, 2,300. This time round, we put it at 3,000 uh, 3, so that we could attract uh, farmers to bring uh, grain to us at, um, at, at SFR. So that was a clear indication that the prices were now competitive in the market. Millers, on the other hand, for them also to attract the maize, increased the prices. And therefore, the farming community and the trader saw an opportunity of an increased price, so they held back. So over time, I remember telling even this committee that we believe very strongly because of our survey that some farmers, especially the large scale, and traders are still holding the, 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 the grain and not releasing it either to the millers or to, uh, to, to National Cereals and Produce for, for SFR for speculation purposes because they were anticipating, and rightfully so, I think they, they, they actually read it right, the prices um, to continue uh, growing, I mean rising for that matter. So the prices started rising to a level where we released um, strategic results, a million uh, um, bucks from our strategic reserve to stabilize the prices. During that time, at the SFR, we had 1.4 million bucks. So we decided to stabilize the prices by releasing, uh, actually it was 1 million, but when we looked at, because the drought situation in the country was going on and we also needed to take care of the relief food, we eventually only accepted that, we only released 750. We didn't release the whole 1 million. What happened is the price, the impact was generated and the price of flour came down to between 118 and 120 Kenya shillings per 2 kilogram bag. But again, it was not, it didn't last for long and then we again started seeing rising prices. At this point in time, we uh, government, or His Excellency the President, announced that the drought and famine situation in the country now was taking a different dimension, and that is why he announced the um, famine as a national disaster, say so that we could get help from um, other, other, uh, other partners or uh, other, um, other countries to come and help us in sorting out this issue of, of the drought. It was followed immediately with removal of uh, duty for yellow maize, because in this country what is happening, and that could have contributed partly on the issue of the projections, is the fact that the dairy industry in Kenya is growing so fast, and there is competition of white maize between human consumption and, the, and, and dairy. And so we, know that we, we realized that we needed to do something on the dairy so that we could release most of the white maize to be consumed by, by humans. And so we removed the duty on yellow maize strictly to be, um, to be used for animal feed. And it was opened to um, millers who were doing animal feed or animal feed millers. That was the condition. In the, in, in the meantime, the prices continued, um, uh, continued rising. 
and we realized Kenyans were now starting to feel the heat of the increased prices. And the government now, during the budget speech, decided to remove duty for all the, the maize, uh, the, 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 even for the human consumption on the 3rd of, uh, of April. Now, no, under normal circumstances, to import grain would take approximately one month. In that case, we were expecting the imported maize to hit our market early uh, March, of which, again, we have, having realized, having opened it, and maybe I need mean to make it very clear, when we opened this uh, window of imports duty-free, we didn't want a situation where we are bringing conditions for anybody to import. We opened it up to the private sector to bring it, but we limited the time because we had in mind also that we needed to control so that not much of it comes here to the extent that it floods the market and we know our farmers are undertaking their normal cropping, of which we needed to be very careful so that we don't um, disadvantage them when they are first um, is, uh, is ready for, for step because again they would miss the market. So we closed the cup, we closed the window to the end of July, 31st July, as the window where we are allowing the white maize to be imported. By then we had estimated that the cup was about 5 million, uh, 5 million bucks, which is tying very closely with the uh, with, 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 the, with the reason why we had this cup in the first place, because as a result of the failed second crop, because really the, the weather uh, was extremely unfavorable. So the second season, we, we had that cup. So we estimated it at five million kilo, uh, five million bucks of, of of 90 kilograms, and so that is what we 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 are looking at to bring in to bridge this cup, so that we can bring down the. The, the, the prices. What happened is, um, as government again in the, uh, in the ministerial and consultation with the private sector, we needed to, uh, by this time, we, we knew the local prices the lo of maize in Kenya and in the region had hit the region of 4,200 for up to 4,500 in the region. And when we left, we, we removed the duty. It wa uh, we realized it was not coming to help in reducing the prices because even the consignments which had been imported had, al had already been signed up by the millers and they were signing up at higher prices. They were signing up at, um, some millers were signing up at 4,100. We realized it was not going to be tenable because again, we would not achieve our objective of reducing uh, the prices. And government, therefore, with serious consultations, decided that we have to subsidize our consumer. And this is the program, uh, Chairman, which um, we support. Can somebody give a seat to the director? Come to the other side. As you continue with it, you just give us uh, the facts, maybe what are the causes of these issues uh, before we go to the importation issue, uh, the, the, the modalities and the, the gritty of the, of the import. Just give us the way you have been doing it, but in a very brief form, at least the factors that has really caused this problem, maybe uh, drought which has consumed maybe uh, a good some of uh, the base that we had, the millers, the neighbors import are not forthcoming. Just give us the facts, what has caused this shortage, that just abruptly the way it has happened. And then we go to the importation and then uh, what is uh, the future or what is the way forward then. Those three go in systematically in that manner. Actually the major cause, Chairman, of this shortage is because of the um, crops, which we all know um, that it befell this country starting from late last year. The drought, as I said, affected almost 
80% of our second season crop. And the estimates which we had for the second season actually did not come. That is number one. Number two, we normally have, whenever we have even said, I've told you normally our production does not match one to one to our requirements. Whenever we, we have any shortage, the, 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 the cross border threat normally supplements it and we could not we, we normally could not feel it. But this time round the situation is the drought affected the region and so even the so our normal cross border threat did not take place. Number two um, the flow of maize from Uganda did not come to Kenya, but in essence it went to southern Sudan. In two ways, um, the, na the non-governmental organizations bought it and helped the people of southern Sudan because of the issues they were going through there, and so they did not, they, the food was actually lacking there. So these uh, issues actually caused the, the, the main shortage, and this one was clear by um, February. Um, chairman. And that's why government starting January started taking measures because we knew with the shortage eventually we had no we had no option but to import. But I was very quick to point out it is not in the interest of government to just import. We wanted to exhaust the availability of any grain in the country because our survey had indicated that some large-scale farmers and the trading um, the traders were still holding uh, some grain. And so any time we made an intervention, the millers could tell us we are now seeing the, 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 the threat bringing in some maize. But then, because they had known that there is shortage, they would bring in and stop and the prices could go up again. So, Chairman, those were the, the, the reasons what caused the, the shortage. Move on to the, the import. How, what, what do you import them so far? Move on to the import. The, the thing I want to bring out also immediately is that government, I have mentioned, I had earlier mentioned some interventions before we read that in, in importation. Um, the whole situation of drought was declared a national disaster. A whole program of intervention, because as, as far as the drought is concerned, was rolled out which involved livestock off the programs, relief food programs, and so all those things were undertaken, including now looking at the, 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 the shortage of grain being eminent and trying to bring in yellow maize fast to stop competition of the use of the white maize between animals and, uh, and humans. As we, as we did that, the price continued uh, increasing and therefore immediately after the, 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 the duty was waived for the entire um, grains in, in, in uh, anything which was coming in. But I want to point it out clearly that government did not import. Government opened importation to the private sector so that they could bring in Messiah to stabilize prices. And so that is what is happening now. The government opened it the, the, the private sector have started importing, but what we realized, because of the high demand, even the imported grain would still sell at a higher price locally. And that is why the government had to come in again, step in to subsidize, um, to subsidize so that we could avail the flour to the Kenyan citizen at a very affordable uh, price. And that is what we are undertaking now, Chairman. I don't know whether you would want me to yeah, can go you into the intervention. Can say something? Yeah. Chair, yeah. yeah. this story is boring, in, in my view. I want us to go to the crux of the matter. Chair, yeah. we know as we speak that there is a food crisis, which, if not properly, can actually evolve into a civil strife. There is a revolution in the making which can topple your government if you aren't careful. But having said that, Chair, this, this matter of the food importation more so means you said that the government is not importing per se. 
the government has enabled the private players to import. But, but our concern, which is the concern of most Kenyans, is the arrangement within which this importation is happening. Even before we get to the subsidy, which is the next issue. Because I'm aware, we are being told that some 6 billion shillings set aside to subsidize that commodity, to make it cheaper. That will explain further. But this importation, you are aware that the importation market is liberalized and people can import so long as they have the capacity and they meet the requirements. Now, can you explain to us uh, at what stage the importation of this very consignment of 29,000 tons, well, there about, about 30,000 tons of maize that your ministry supposedly supervised at the port of Omasa, at what stage did this importation start? Did it commence immediately after the minister waived duty on maize import? And if it did, was it was it directed at specific companies? And these companies, which are they, okay, as we speak, which particular companies imported these 30,000 tons of maize which you went to receive in Mombasa? But more importantly, more importantly, is uh, since you have, as a government, been involved directly in the transactions or the business of the private players. Honorable Dai, don't lecture like the minister did. <laughs> I'm finishing. I'm finishing. I'm finishing, Sachia. What I want to, in short, really, is give us the identity of these companies. One. Two, give us the process of the procurement of this maze. And finally, and finally, let us know the source of this maze and at what price did it land at the port and therefore what subsidy are you giving? Thanks. Yes, uh, Florence. Uh, Chair, thank you. Uh, welcome, CS. Yes. Early this year, around January, February, you informed this committee that all was well in as far as the food situation in the country was concerned. What, according to you, happened suddenly was the drought. Yet, this country had been warned by the, the weather people very many times that there was a drought that was coming. After that, the president announced it as a national disaster. Then uh, things started moving. You started saying about the opening of the window of imports coming in. My question is, was the only intervention that the government had that time, was it just to uh, bring in, to open the window for the imports and then uh, waive uh, duty? Secondly, you say the, the drought is uh, the main factor of the problems that we have as a country, where we are right now. We have, you said it is affecting the regions. We have not seen Tanzania having the drama we are having. You are saying Uganda imported even food to Sudan. They are not having those drums exported to, to Sudan. They have already done that. How come the other regions are not affected? What is it us as a country we are doing wrong that the other regions are not doing wrong? The last one. You have not mentioned in your presentation about the fertilizer that has affected the farmers last year. Because that should have been one of the things, apart from the drought, that has affected farmers' production of the crop. And then, uh, you have not even mentioned in your presentation the issue of Galana Kulalu, yeah. which is one of the factors that has taken a lot of money from your docket, and yet farmers have not, Kenyans have not been cushioned by that uh, Galana Kulalu. We expected to hear it uh, from your presentation as one of the, the issues that have brought us where we are right now. I have many questions, but for now, those are the ones I have. For record purposes, Galana Kulalo is no longer under, under the minister's docket. It is with irrigation and under Honorable, Honorable Amalwa, but uh, nevertheless, it is still leads to food security. Honorable, uh, last one, Honorable John. And then uh, I give the minister the floor to answer. Uh, thank you, Chair. Chair, um, mine would be very, very brief questions. I don't want to go into this restaurant. Uh, Waziri, you came to this committee. And uh, you made a pronouncement to the effect that there was enough food because farmers still held a maize bag expecting the prices to rise. Did you, 
as a minister ensure that you collected data from those areas that produce maize over how many bucks that were being held back by farmers because in this case I see there was just a presumption did you and the if so how many bucks did you find out that they were being held by farmers chair um, some reference has been made to countries like Uganda and Tanzania I am told and I have also learned that Tanzania when it learned that shoot, shortage of maize it closed its borders there is no exportation where do you realize there was deficit of maize in this country what measures did you take to ensure that whatever that was produced in the country did not leave the borders at any given time um, another question I would want the minister to address himself to is the issue of the second group that he has talked of he's kept on making reference to a sec failure of second group when did you expect this group was it in January was it in December when and when it, uh, you realize it has failed what measures did you put in place to question Kenyans from what is affecting them now thank you Jim. Just, just give him a chance to answer those, those are two I'll come to you thank you board. thank you chair um, I think again I will have to repeat that um, when I say the country was stable as far as the food is concerned I made it very clear that until the end of May because we had done our survey and we realized that is a time when an intervention would be needed that one I made it very clear and by that time I talked of farmers holding 10 million bags of, of, of maize the, the traders by then were holding 2.7 million and the, the millers the millers were holding 993,000 of, of, with our survey and with those projections we could see the country stable until the end of May and um, whatever happened after that is now what the government intervention that took place I would want to still emphasize amongst some of the interventions and you talked of Tanzania banning actually the president announced and banned any export of maize to any country in March this is the time when we had realized um, there is going to be a deficit May the, 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 our May's lasting up to May meant that we were already going to experience a deficit. An intervention had to happen. And because we were not getting, and because the region was, did not have May's, every country would then have to import. There are countries who never produce. Their food is imported. In situations where we are facing deficit, the country to feed its people has to import. And that is exactly the intervention which we took as government. Um, we didn't take it in February because it was not, we didn't want to open a huge window for importation. We had to import at the right time just to come and serve the purpose under which we are talking about. Just to come and serve the period of the deficit. I, imagine a situation if we had imported in February or March. I am sure we, we could have created other, other issues. So, and as I say, it is all, it's the last resort, otherwise we would want Kenyans to consume what is uh, produced lo locally. As far as this program, the subsidy is concerned, which Mwishimiwa and I say, that is where I was headed. Most of what you said is actually where I was, uh, I was going. And I, Chairman, I don't know whether you would want now me to... But you never, you never reached there in your presentation. You never went into the I had not even reached there. Chair, Chair, there are questions, it is becoming, I think there are questions we would want him to answer. Chair, um, this is a supplementary question, so that we deal with this issue but systematically. You have told us you expected to have enough food up to the end of May. Yes. When I woke up this morning, I realized it is on the 18th of May. It's not the end of May. Yes. How come there is already a deficit? A huge one. There is an outcry. Which May did you make? Is it 2016? 
It is this May, no, Chairman. No, no, let me, it's not a contest. Let, 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 let me follow it. How many banks do you have? That um, how many banks do you have now in the stores to feed Kenyans, excluding <coughs> the inputs? Because what you should be having from your own explanation is that you are you are ready as a country and a minister to feed us Kenyans up to the end of May. Let me make it clear, we are ready to feed Kenyans until the next crop is harvested. And I want to assure we are ready and the government is going to do anything possible chair, to ensure chair. that Kenyans order 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 But then let me... No, no, chair, order that's not my question. Order members, order Waziri, order Waziri. I think the question is very specific. The issue is, there, as you anticipated, there were two million held by the, by, 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 by the businessmen. Uh, it was not ten, but it was four million that when you give us the figure by, 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 by the farmers, and then one million, or almost nine hundred by the by the by the by the millers. Uh, I think you are not giving us very clear issue because our suspicion or our thinking is those maize that were there during your survey has not been consumed by Kenyans. It must have gone somewhere. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's okay. I, I'll give you. So the, what the question Honorable Sarut is asking, if you had had that maize and you have even increased the price to 3 million shillings to mop up those maize out of the markets, then what happened that you, you didn't even reach the end of May yeah. that we're in the crisis where we are now? That is, that's the question, I think. That's in fact, um, Chairman, even when we met, our strong conviction was the traitors are still holding um, the maze because any time we did an intervention the traitors released and then um, stopped but the, the projection after may um, when we projected after before before may the government definitely had to do something to ensure that we break the cap and that is why we identified the cap to be 5 million and that is why in April we decided to undertake uh, an importation. Our Kenyan maize did not get out of this country. The SFR maize, I think that's another question which you, you Be brought German up. Before. Yes. German before. On, 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 German before. German before. Uh, I think German, and that is why we are requesting Honorable Opio and I, perhaps it was a bit too fast. German, but unless we get it right from the word go, we will not get what we want. And Chairman, the bottom line is what you told this committee in January. And you did say specifically that the farmers are holding 4 million bucks, not actually 10, Chairman. No, no, I have the... That is what you told us, and it's on record. And Chairman, I recall very well. I did ask a specific question. As how that was December. It's okay. Yeah. I, I, did recall, I recall asking you very specifically. How did you know that these farmers are holding four million bucks? What technique? What method did you use? Because chairman, not unless we get to know that indeed there are those four million bucks or it was just a myth. This is where the whole problem is, Mr. Chairman. So, and unless we get to know the bottom of this, uh, Chairman will be going nowhere. Okay. I think we are at the beginning where we are. Where, what happened really? I think we're, we're very specific on two issues. One is the maize that has not come into the stores that are being held by farmers or by, 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 by businessmen. That one, I think, you may not be able to account for, but uh, 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 our knowledge also, our information is that those maize must have gone to South Sudan the way that the one of the one has gone. It is, it is common knowledge. I think they, are, they may be hoarded out of the country, either before the present bandit or after. So I think we need to be very, very, very specific and very sincere to ourselves. That at least with, the, with, the, with whatever you give us in January and whatever little harvest you have harvested in February or so, the second harvest, I think you couldn't have been in a situation where you are, despite the fact that this the border maze that used to come, as you have said, that is one factor that you may have counted on, but never, never be. But just give us, that is where we, we, we need to understand, so at least we can be able to move to the, the importation and the, the interventions. 
for figures. Um, yes, you have something. Let me thank you, Chair. I'm, I'm not helping the Minister. We are supposed to. That's why you are there. Okay, are supposed to. I think. Uh, let me uh, say this: the figures we are talking about uh, of January is uh, data collected by our technical officers using the most uh, uh, appropriate methods of uh, uh, counting and assessing you know, the number of grains we have particularly on maize. And those figures, indeed, as the Minister has put it, in uh, uh, December it was 10 uh, million. But come January, uh, and I think as the uh, Minister has put it, what will happen is that uh, the short uh, rain harvest, that is the short rains October, November, December, January, which is usually takes about three, four months for the maize to, to, to be harvested. We have an assessment undertaken and we get the results in February. And I think that's the time we were assessing that our, uh, our production was seriously depressed. And that's why we mentioned that uh, probably we are going to get specific figures that probably farmers had 4.4 million bags, uh, traders had about 5.5 million bags, and I think we are going to, even go to get more details on that. So come that period, we knew end of May will not have enough mix. And uh, Honorable Chair, that's why we took some we see uh, some, uh, some serious uh, steps by government. One was to declare the drought. Because during that period, we were assessing about 3 million Kenyans who are starving, who are not going to have food. And therefore, some of these interventions was actually to sort out the problem of the drought. Now, we also, on 13th of April, we actually waived duty of all maize imported to Kenya. And we did not specify it should be imported by millers, we did not specify to be imported by specific companies. We said anyone can import maize without duty to Kenya. And indeed, uh, Honorable Chair, I have the Gazette notice here, which was very, very specific. This was an intervention to help us mop up maize wherever it was in the world, duty free to Kenya to meet this gap, which we knew after May we are going to have shortage of maize. And I think let's be specific, Honorable Chair. We are talking about only maize. When you talk about other food crops, we have other food crops in the country. But it's maize which is stable for probably most, I think, uh, middle class and maybe elites in this country, particularly they shifted maize. That's actually causing us this problem. When you talk about even the maize being held by our, our farmers, as we speak now, any gro uh, maize growing area in this country, farmers and households are still holding maize. I come from Samburu West, even not as a PS, as a farmer. I have got 15 bags of maize in my house, and every villager in that area has got not less than one bag. The whole of Northern, North Rift, South Rift, Bungoma, Western Kenya, our farmers who grow maize have kept them in their stores and their galleries. They have maize. But what we are saying here, we are saying that specifically for this uh, sector and this area, we have a shortage. And this is why we gave Kenyans to import the maize. On, uh, 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 and therefore, what has happened is that, uh, Honorable Chair, is that people and the uh, uh, international companies imported the maize and that's the maize now we are struggling to deal with but as you speak now in this country since yesterday we have 980 bags of 90 kilograms maize in this country Major, uh, about eight uh, about seven, eight, 700 800 of it is actually from national strategic food reserve uh, our our businessmen and i think millers and even small millers are holding about 110 we are talking about 980,000 bags of maize. That 980,000 bags of maize is enough to provide us with shifted maize meal up to 29th of May of this, uh, of this month. And therefore, what we are working on as a government is actually to see how now we continue providing you know, on a sustainable manner this shifted maize meal and probably even additional maize for Kenyans up to when we get our next crop in October. So I just wanted to put this into perspective for uh, Honorable Chair, that, and I want to confirm, we have 980,000 bags. This is actually our own maize. And that's 980 that we started yesterday, putting it in the market on a subsidy program. And subsidy, on Honorable Chair, and I think maybe you uh, will also help us here. This parliament and this house has always gone out of its way to support our farmers providing subsidy programs. It has provided subsidy when it comes to tractors provide a subsidy when it comes to, 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 to seedlings and fertilizer. So this time around, because of the fact that there is no maize in the world today, in fact, you Google, white maize cannot be found. It is inelastic commodity. It's a commodity that can only be found at one period 
and it disappears because it's only distinct to Africa. White maize. The rest of the world is consuming GMO maize and yellow maize. So what's happening is that because of this, the prices have skyrocketed, spiked. It is now, all of us know, it's about 5,000 shillings per bag. And what we are saying is that we are trying to negotiate to see how we can mop up all maize, wherever it is, so that we can actually make this subsidy program for our Kenyan people, consumers, to get maize milk at 90 shillings per 2 kilogram packet. Chair, chair. Thank you, chair. Chair, there's a terminology I want to follow up from the uh, PS. They are using a terminology here called mobbing. Mopping the the maize from the traders from the farmers. One thing that I want him to come clear: if you are using this terminology to buy maize from where they are holding it, are we considering our farmers? Because, as you have said, even you, you still have about fifteen thousand bags, fifteen bags in your household, and you know there are some other farmers who are still maybe having the same. How come that now in your planning you want to subsidize the traders first? In your thinking you want to subsidize the traders like now these millers who have imported you are buying from them at a cost of 4,300 and yet our farmers our farmers that you have confessed are still having maize in their house including you you cannot pay them 4,300 and you want to still pay them 2,500. Now, can you be able to tell me this definition of what? Mobbing. Uh, are you mobbing only from the traders who are rich? And if these traders were also holding their, 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 their stocks as per the last time the CS came, which means they still have 5.5 million bucks. And again, you gave them the free hand to import free of charge, which means now this would have more than what we need. How come that Wanjiku cannot get affordable price of Onga? It's still from 100 to 180 to 90. What game are you really playing with our farmers and these traders? And who are these traders? Who are these millers who are milking money from the taxpayers instead of our farmers benefiting. We need these people, people like Stan Waves. We want these names because we know them. A whole band. We just want these people who have, you have subsidized them at 4,300. And my farmer... Sorry, sorry. But I want just to understand, Chair, this, this terminology. If it is a matter of, you know, mopping, why don't we start mopping? Pay them that, 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 that's a good I don't question. know if you, you get me. That's a good question. That's a good question. Thank you, Chair. Uh, don't, don't dilute it. I think, uh, yeah, I think let's, let's have so maybe one bag, two bags to commercial purposes, but <laughs> we are not yet supposed to be mopped out of the market. But nevertheless, uh, yes. Okay. Thank uh, you, I think Chair. whatever you have mentioned, uh, it was uh, these pricings. If you have raised the price, uh, which I, I, I really am not sure, to 4300 uh, or could there be any other maze that is left still being held the way you are assuming or the way you have clearly said what is the uh, amount of maize that is being held is it for commercial purpose or is it one bag, two bags, five bags that you have said for, by the farmers for their own for their own consumption so please be, be, be specific about it so that at least you don't confuse that at least there is still maize and you are importing maize and at a different price and subsidizing so I know you are, be, you are between two catches because one time you have to protect the farmers. On the other hand, you have to feed the consumers. Please come out clear about it. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'll, thank you, Honorable uh, uh, Okay, on the issue of mopping or uh, on the issue of acquisition, whatever problem the terminology is, what I want to say is first is that uh, as a government uh, and as a state, we have moral obligation and a national obligation to feed our Kenyans. And uh, I want to say that it has to happen within the confines of law. But one thing that is overriding, we cannot allow prices to skyrocket. We cannot allow Kenyans not to have food on their table because of probably a failure. Whatever the reasons, either it's natural disaster, which is real, or whatever reasons, whether it's failure to plan, we have really to undertake this. 
But I want to say this on the issue of the maize that's being held today by our households. Basically, some of it, you know, in some instances probably sold, but actually it's very, very domestic. But the point remains that they hold it for their own domestic consumption. Uh, and that's why probably when we hear the cry, and probably even if we do a proper assessment and even survey, you can actually tell where is the noise coming from about this shifted maze. But otherwise, in that village of mine, yes, I want to emphasize, and I think even where our Honorable Uta comes from, people still carry one team, two teams, to Korokoro, to Agerekoreko, grind the maze, and come and make their ugali. But all the same, the point here is that uh, he has mentioned that uh, we had specific people in mind or specific companies. One of our our consumption per month of maize is three million bucks. Three million bucks per month. And this is something that has been done in pre evidence and proper estimates. So even if we talk about 5.5 million in January, three million per month means that exactly one and a half months or two months down the road. So what I want to confirm here, and Honorable Chair, I think we need to be trusted, you know, as government officers and honorable people. There is no way you can come and cheat Kenyans and cheat Parliament like this. There is no maze that is remaining in this country that's going to take us up to the end of, of, of May. No, uh, uh, no miller, except a few ones. There are a few holding probably maybe 10, 10. In fact, one thing I can even be specific. The only maze that was in the, um, in the hands of the miller, small and big, as at last week, was 110 bucks. 110,000 bucks. And this can be verified by Kenya, uh, KRA, Kenya Revenue Authority. They have got the mechanism, the framework to actually ascertain this. Therefore, I want I want to confirm that the maze, which one thing is that as the Gazette notice says, we not give this to specific millers, to specific companies. What we said was that initially we thought people will import and the prices will come down. It has not come down. Whatever we have done now, in fact, what the maze we are we are buying, we have already established an interministerial negotiating team using the government laid down procurement procedures to actually get maize, negotiate with the traders, and even Kenyans, if Kenyans have the maize today. In fact, as we speak now, yesterday we locked in a price per bag from the maize that has actually arrived in this country. And we are buying a bag at 3,600 Kenyan shillings. And we are ready to have any maize from any Kenyan, from anywhere, at 3,600, and we are buying it at that price. It is even subsidized. The prices you are seeing in Nairobi, in Dar es Salaam, is not less than 4,200. But we are saying the maize we are buying, and I want to Honorable Uta to take it from me, from me it is 3,600. This is 3,600 per 90 kilogram bag. And that is the maize we are subsidizing. And the subsidy is actually 1,300 per bag. And therefore, what I want to say here is, we are ready if I, for scrutiny. The procurement is there, the intermediary teams are there, they are actually working on it. KRA is there. Therefore, I think this oh, sure. impression oh, sure. created that we are buying maize at 4,600. In fact, even some instances, 5,000 per bag is unacceptable. It is wrong. It's misplaced, and actually, we should not be actually condemned because it's actually uh, it's not true. We are buying at 3,600 as we speak now, and we intend going forward. Given the situation, as we continue getting more maize, wherever we want to get it, we are going to negotiate. If the prices will come down, well and good. If they will go up, we shall see how we are going to handle this. But one thing I want to retreat, Honorable Chair, as a government, we are not going to allow Kenyans to buy maize meal at 150 shillings. We have decided they will have to buy it at 90 shillings, a subsidized price. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Oshali. Uh, thank you, Chair, and um, <coughs> my apologies for coming in late. Uh, uh, Chair, also pardon me uh, for sitting very close to the, to the ministry. Uh, <laughs> I am still part oh, no, of no, 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 the minister. <laughs> uh, thank you, Chair. Chair, I am among the members of this committee who are very passionate on these uh, food stocks. Uh, Chair, and uh, I also want to just remind you that uh, food security has nothing to do with the uh, political parties. It is something that we need to address as a country. Chair. Uh, when we raised this issue, both in December and February, uh, our cabinet secretary said that uh, he has a scientific way of finding out the stocks, both in our stores and also with farmers. Uh, I've also been around long enough to know, Chair, that 
we had a policy in this country a policy that said that immediately stocks uh, spend the SFR fall below 8 million then an alarm is raised because 8 million um, uh, bags should be able to last this country approximately two months and uh, two months and a half now uh, chairman what is happening is that uh, the alarm is being raised whether we don't have anything in the stores my question which I want to put squarely on the capital secretary because the issue of policy is, in, is uh, domesticated in, the, uh, in, in his uh, ministry what happened why did we have below 8 million uh, bugs in the stores for him to raise an alarm because if that was uh, was raised early enough then uh, issue, the, this emergency will not be as intense as it, it, it is today therefore chair I just wanted to find out the policy in the ministry in as far as food security is concerned uh, thank you Mr. Shirley uh, but uh, um, for us to make progress let's not go into um, a lot of storytelling. Let's respond to some of these questions and also I want to thank members that you ask direct questions. As you answer Mishime uh question, I want you to tie it with the question I asked. How many bags are we holding right now? That question has not been properly answered. How many are we still holding now? Because as by January or December you told this committee that we had enough food up to and including 31st of May 2017 but what is now going to the shelves you have, you have to come clear on that is what has been imported the other day including what was milled yesterday for 90 shelves and then also the issue of the price uh, members let's be very brief in these questions asking yeah, um, there is also much more problems question. What was it about? Can you repeat your question so that it is answered? The interventions have been. No, no, the hmm. issue of uh, the drugs. We had been warned about the drugs by the weather over a long time of, of a period. Uh, the only intervention we had got Yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, another one is the issue of gazettement. You have said you have gazetted for. You know, anyone to, 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 to import, surely. I thought it was, we, we are a country, a country that is guided by policy, a country that uh, has its own legal mechanisms in place. How do you, uh, how do you just advertise and open what we call floodgates? Suppose we have a hundred million bags in this country, where will it be stored? Thank you very much, um, Chairman. Our policy requires that we have 4 million bags in stock and 4 million what in, in cash. That is how the 8 million comes about. Let me throw you back, Chairman. We had 4 million uh, bags in our crane um, SFR. But what had happened, this is crane which had been carried over for a very long time. And last year, uh, we undertook a cleaning mechanism and even approved that some of the crane had actually deteriorated in quality to the extent that we had to sell it to, to, for animal feed. So in that process of uh, cleaning up, that is how the stocks came down to what we communicated to this committee in the meeting of uh, February. The holdings now, um, Chairman, is 980,000. We have not milled any imported uh, consignment. What we are milling and what you are seeing in the, in the shops now is what we are holding in the country, which is 980,000 bags, of which we have started subsidizing, and this is what you are getting at 90 shillings in the shelves. Now, so, don't there, so that the, the members do not ask you this question. Yes. Are you saying what you are milling is what, what was? Was in Esabar. Esabar. Yes. Therefore, what you have actually subsidized because the millers are the ones doing it, is what was already here. 
not what has been imported. As we are going to subsidize. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Can you answer that? As yes we speak no? now, yes. Okay. As we speak now, yes. So maybe I can uh, continue to answer. Um, the take a statement. Take a statement is when we waived the duty, we did waive duty for so and so. We waived duty for anybody who would import base to this country. And that is why we didn't want to go into the process of tendering and deciding who should import and who should not import. So because we required a, a specific um, amount of, of grain, five million, so it followed then. By the time we achieve our five million, our subsidy program, our the duty waiver is stopped. And we are monitoring very closely with KRA to ensure that what comes to this country under uh, duty waiver and also under this subsidy program should not exceed five million bucks because we have calculated and realized that is the cap which is existing in the country for things to normalize. We will still monitor the situation because weatherman is still giving point us of order, chairman. <coughs> point of order, chairman. Yes. Uh, chairman, it's good for, for the CS to put it straight. Uh, in the Kenya cassette, they did specifically say anybody. Yeah, yeah, we can. And how many bags in the Kenya cassette? We can circulate, but we didn't put the number of bags in the Kenya cassette. What is happening is we have our mechanism through KRA to know how many are we going. In fact, uh, our concern is, Chairman, our concern is. If you give an open-ended cassette that you give an opportunity to anybody without mentioning specifically the number of bugs you want, then to me, what, what I was saying about you, I mean, that, that is so dangerous. We have a mechanism. We, can, we have a mechanism, Mr. Chairman, and we would really want you to trust us. We have mechanisms, not even from the Ministry of Agriculture alone, but from Treasury and uh, KRA to monitor, because every intervention we are doing now is based on the fire. I, uh, I think what the member is asking is the issue of how many bags do you tender for? In your case, I said, did you put out there that you require five million bucks? I think mean, as simple as that. It's a straightforward question. Yeah, yeah, no, we didn't didn't know. It is no, no we didn't tender for any. We only waived the duty for anybody to bring maize to this country. Yeah. But what we require is five thousand. Order, Mr. Chair. Maybe just an intervention. Order, order, order. Let's go. Just, just so, let's go. Let the members pursue this question. John, John. Uh, my shimiwa, my answer then when you on the same, so that we don't lose uh, track. It's on the same, Mr. 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 Chamber. You, you know, the moment you put an open-ended cassette, uh, Panaceans, uh, there's a likelihood of abuse. Unless you withdraw this gazette and you be specific. It also shows lack of planning on part of your ministry, a lack of specifics, a lack of knowing for how long. This gazette is open-ended forever. Even when we have enough maids in the country, it is likely to be abused. It is not your uh, because we used it said of saying we use the period, yes. Uh, uh, hold on, Bernas, yes. yes. There is another member to ask and then you answer all of them, please. Chair, yeah, sorry for coming late. It's very interesting. Uh, PS and C S. First of all, I think I come from North Rift, as you know. And this question has not been answered properly. The fact that uh, PS has accepted Amos Afama from North Rift of close to 1,000 bucks in my store. That is still sitting there because the ministry has not come up clean. They have not encouraged the locals to release whatever. Because when I, when I farm a uh, chair, it's for two purposes. You see it as a food crop or a commercial a crop. That's the purpose of me having 1,000, I just come from Kitale, I have 1,000 bucks in my store. Now what there is, is that I, the price will come up good, 
the ministry will encourage the locals. That's what my colleagues have asked you. We ask the locals to release the money. If I do, why are we going out of our way to, really, to go and get uh, maize from, I don't know what source, Mexico, South Africa, name it, India, whatever there is, when we have maize in our store? You have not encouraged the locals to release whatever stocks are holding. And therefore the question that is coming up, that's what Ruth is asking, and I just want to ask you, and my colleague has said the same thing, don't just say, bring in whatever. Because you are called in inconvenience, in inconvenience, those so-called traitors, in quotes, I don't know who they are, you come and say, according to your notice, I'm supposed to bring. And yes, you are telling us that you have a mechanism of restricting what comes in. Come out clean, say we were not given. By the way, <coughs> the biggest problem in the ministry today is your extension service of They are not giving you the right information. Because we should have actually had this information right from the beginning. In fact, um, members of the who don't, don't even have family here. Uh, this is something that is something. You, so can you, you, have, you have made yes. your point. Let no. the CS respond. Can you tell, for, tell us what we can do to mop, as the PSP has said, whatever we are holding out there, so we can see the, the, the deficit and be able to bring in extra food? Thank you, Chair. Um, if we all remember what happened, when we were doing the intervention, even the release of the first one million from the strategic grain reserve, I made it very clearly, and I was appealing to Kenyans because we had noticed some uh, big farmers and some traders were still holding. And we were telling them, please release all what you have. We said it severally. We even, I even warned it in our true media that anybody who is still holding um, grain would burn their fingers. I announced that. And um, Honorable um, Member for uh, Honorable Anyoni, yes. yes. Um, if you are still holding up to this point, it, it gets to prove, because you are just among the many farmers who could also be holding, it shows that if we leave the situation the way it is, because as we speak now, before the intervention of import, the price of one ninety kilogram bag was headed for five thousand. Up to how level would you release, uh, Honorable Wanyoni, you are one thousand bags? Is it when it hits seven thousand or ten thousand? No. And where will the consumer be at that point in time? And that is why we decided as government enough is enough, because this price was going up and um, the local maize, as we have, we, uh, we have told you, was the one causing. If you are holding it, then we cannot come to your houses and force you to release it. Our assumption now is there is no maize, and we have to feed Kenyans. We have to bring in maize from yeah. from outside. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Just, 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 let thank you, yes, Chair. Let, let yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Chair. I think on the issue of the Gazette notice, yeah, it is true that the, the Gazette notice did not give uh, the limit of five million. And uh, we acknowledge that uh, we need to do this, and it's not going to take us uh, probably more than two days. We shall actually get it. We require five minutes. And, and the time frame, too. And the time yes, frame. so that and the time frame, the time frame is there. But the five million is not there, we are going to indicate it. However, just as a rider, we are receiving our, our food uh, balance sheet uh, results by the end of this week, that's actually by tomorrow. If the situation will probably demand any, uh, any other extra efforts, we'll still probably even come to you and even inform Kenyans. But I also want to answer the question from Honorable Anyoni. Honorable Anyoni, if you have maize, we told you the last time we were buying at 2,300, you refused. We gave you 2,500, you refused. We gave you 3,000, you refused. We have got depots in every part of our county, uh, of our country. And therefore, what we have now is 3,600. Please bring the maize, we shall buy it. And we are telling all Kenyans, bring that maize at 3,600, we shall buy it. And we shall stop any maize coming outside this country, and we use yours. Can, you. we, can we do this then? Uh, uh, with the pleasure, I'm going to instruct so that I can be able to send to the National Serious Board. Now, can you do there of this? I did not get that information, much as I'm also a member of this uh, committee. What about uh, a farm out there? The, the, all I'm saying, listen, all I'm saying, the media, Whatever media, whatever means you are using to inform those who are holding, I think should be very explicit. 
So I think maybe you think you have talked to the nation, to Standard, to Star and the radio, as some people have told you. So your extension service officers on the ground should be able to assist you to mop up. I think they are not doing a good job. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I do honorable members. Uh, one thing is becoming almost clear that whatever the minister was saying that they are still made being held is coming out. It is becoming, it is, it is coming the fact that the Kenyans are still holding maize, and uh, I think we are appealing to them to release those maize. And I remember the minister at one time, I think around March, April, going to the press and saying, "Please release the maize with a price of three thousand shillings now." Otherwise, we, yeah, I, I don't, no, not now. I mean, that time, that time, it was, it was three thousand shillings that they were buying the zero sports were buying. But nevertheless, with that maize still in Kenya, then this is the situation that we are in, and uh, we, have, we, have, we have to intervene. So that one is, I think, it's very clear now. The price has been indicated. Whoever is holding it can be able to release. Secondly, secondly, foundation production, I think we have a problem in terms of also the devolution has a role to play because agriculture being devolved, the production being part uh, fully, the responsibility of the counties, I think also they also have a role to play in that aspect, despite the fact of the weather, which is a natural calamity that they cannot do much about it. But in terms of resource allocations also, I think there is an issue that between the two levels of government, something must be done in, in terms of addressing the production factor. Then I, I give to... On the, on, on, please, let me give a... Allow me to answer the, the warning of the weather and, uh, and the issue of the, of the drought. When the warning happen, uh, Chair, when a the warning of the drought happened, we took it very seriously, we monitored the situation, and that is why by January, by end of January, we were sure that whatever we had in store would not last us the whole haul. So it was a confirmation. So the warning, we took it very seriously. By then we had planted the short rain crop. So what we were to do, therefore, is, and we went ahead, Honorable Member, to supply our Kenyans with some um, drought-tolerant seeds, because we already knew the drought is imminent and the rains, in fact, the weatherman said is go the rains are going to be very depressed. And so we went ahead and supplied 750,000 750, metric tons of drought-tolerant seeds so that we could mitigate on that um, situation. The, the, the only problem is the rainfall pattern is still insisted and therefore that um, uh, seed did not actually translate into um, food because the, 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 the rains were depressed even further. So we took measures and that is why the final resort was to feed Kenyans through bringing in maize from outside. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, um, um, I would like to say I'm also happy with the idea that now they need to put a limit on the importation so that we protect our farmer, because I was a bit worried on the way it was left open, which I think that has been clarified. Uh, I also want to add on a few things that Piers mentioned clearly, that uh, they, 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 they want to protect the consumer. And talking about protecting the consumer is that they don't want the prices to, to, be, to go high or to become very high. But looking at it, uh, when the government, or rather when the ministry released the uh, maize, I think the one million bags of maize, the alarm had been raised by the millers that there was no maize, or rather the maize that was in the country was to only last for less than a week. And when we released the one million bags, uh, and I remember very well asking some questions later, after some time, the millers had only bought about 200,000 bags. And that was after almost a month. So uh, my question was, the, 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 the alarm was actually false or something like that. But they were trying to actually bring importation. But the ministry did not uh, allow the importation. But the interesting thing is that after the, two, the three weeks, they had not put any maize. That means they were lying to us. Uh, the other question is that the prices, <coughs> when you look at the price of 3,000 shillings at that time, vis-a-vis -vis compared the conversion factor and how much they were selling the, 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 the two kilograms bag of uh, maize meal, if the PS is saying they wanted to consider also the consumer, I think the price of 3,000 shillings per bag, did it actually come out to the, the consumer benefit to that price? Because if you convert that price, I think 
still at the 90 shillings the prices are still quite reasonable comparing the uh, 90 shillings per, 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 per 2 kilos so is it actually is the consumer benefiting or are we benefiting the, 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 the middleman or the, the millers Hi. the other thing that has come out very clearly now that the price of maize now is 3,600 if any farmer has the three uh, maize should actually uh, cereal should be buying at 3,600 we want Kenyans to benefit but are we going to be looking at the price when the miller, or rather when the miller makes noise that there, there is no maize or the price or the, uh, the prices are not good? And yet the consumer is also suffering. And yet the farmer has always been selling their maize at 3,000 shillings, 2,300, 2,500. Does it con con uh, come out well that if the prices are 3,000, when they mill the, the one bag 3,000, how much, what's the margin the miller is making? So that we are able to assist the consumer. Finally, there is also milk. Milk is about 70 shillings now. Is it a half, half a liter? I just want to bring up that question because they are saying they want to protect the consumer. No, I just want to add to that because you see, if they, if they want to also protect the consumer, the consumer is now buying maize at around 70 shillings per half liter. And yet the farmer is being paid 20 shillings per half liter. So they also want to look at that. So that we also think of maybe having a board that controls the prices so that the consumer does not suffer. But I think... Uh, I think this country has a, a, a liberalized, liberalized market. What about the ballot? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Uh, mine is just a single one. Uh, yeah, with the explanation given by the CS and the PS. Okay, now we appreciate actually the initiative taken by the government to ensure that our food is available, I mean, maize is available, and um, three importation, uh, and of course, uh, at affordable prices for the common man. That one we appreciate. Now, knowing the behavior of Kenyans, particularly the business people, that they take advantage of situations like now, the crisis that we are going through. Do you foresee a situation where the traders and the millers are going to hold uh, this case um, with the hope that uh, probably now there will be more demand and therefore increase the prices? How do you address that situation? Two, what assurance are you giving the Kenyans that uh, the imported maize is not here more? Yes, Let, let's be a bit systematic, honorable members. Let's deal with the issue of the crisis, and then come to the issue of the solution. I think if we if we move up and then come back again, move, move forward backward, I think we're not going to bring this thing to an end. So can we can we deal with the issue and finalize with the issue of the shortage? How did it arise? I think the minister has explained, and then how, how do we mitigate you know, the issue of drought? He has explained. So can we be able to deal with the issue of the causes of shortage? or this crisis in the first place, and then come to the issue of importation. So I went through with the, with, with the issue of, uh, of, 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 of shortage. What is the cause? I think that one has been explained enough. So no, can we... Can no, we no, yes. Chair, chair, yeah, if you have an issue, just ask. Yes, I want to close that yeah, one. Yeah, uh, chair, 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 you know, um, I've been triggered by the response that we have had from the PS and the CSF, where they have been uh, changing the prices of... Uh, back and I want to sympathize with those farmers who've, who sold their produce at 2,500 because because right now now the price has gone to 3,600 and <coughs> I think the farmers who are holding their stocks have a good reason they wanted to to get more there's nobody who will not want to get more what is the policy I think it is very important that the, the ministry comes out with a policy that would encourage farmers other than encouraging farmers to hold stocks because what is, what is coming out clearly is that farmers knew that if they held their stock, eventually they'll get more out of it. Now, uh, and indeed it has come to pass that uh, indeed those ones who sold less, who sold at 2,500, are going to lose for the same crop. What is the policy of the ministry? Are they meant to encourage farmers to farm and then sell? Or they are uh, encouraging farmers to farm and then hold until when there's a crisis and then uh, sell, sell to the government? I think there's a problem with the policy, Chair. Yeah. Willing by a willing seller. Yeah, absolutely. You, 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 you sell at 2,300 because you have it. The scarcity, you sell at 3,600, you keep it, I think. Let's, let, 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 let cross this bridge. I think. Uh, the, the government has a responsibility to protect the farmer, give them the price that they want, at the expense of the consumers who are also Kenyans who need to be protected. So yeah, you have got those, those two acts to balance. Yeah. So but the fact that at least the farmer cannot be paid a high price and he holds, then I think we look at the cost of production, 
and then we look at the, what we are paying the farmers, and then we look at what the consumers are. I think, but the, the aspect of now controlling the price, uh, this what, what, what do you buy and what, what do you selling? I think that one, uh, we, they have no limitation. It's, it's a market which controls the price. So please let's not just go into those. Yes, John. Uh, yeah. 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 No, the, the willing buyer, willing seller is. Chair, um, Chair, it is my proposal that we go into the issues of uh, not get solutions. Um, yes, solutions by the ministry, especially the subsidies. And uh, my concern is what the, who is being subsidized? And uh, what has been, what measure has been put there to determine that subsidy amount? These are some of the things that Kenyans are asking, Chairman, outside there. Who is being subsidized? Is it the importer? Is it the miller? Or is it the consumer? If it is the, uh, the consumer, who how does it trickle to the consumer? These are some of the questions, Chair, that um, I'm so much interested as a member of this uh, particular committee, Chair. So, so can we move to the subsidy issue and the importation process so that at least we can proceed? Yeah. Okay. No. One number, Chair, what is it? Before that, Chair, uh, I think we will be in uh, our contribution to really give us, give a way forward in terms of uh, the future uh, challenges that we are facing in the same sector. Chair, the main problem with this, uh, we, we are from a region where we, we, we farmers and our constituents are, uh, are farmers of uh, maize. Chair, we have, um, unless we put in place regulations to control the millers, who are, they are the ones who determine on the prices, they are the ones who, 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 who create this shortage uh, perception, artificial shortage, even when it is not their chair. Um, we, we, we want regulations in place that are going to regulate the same millers to have a price that will be uh, competent in the market in terms of taking care of the welfare of the farmers. At the same time, the consumers are protected. But when we leave chair to this, uh, I was about to use the word crooks, millers. They are serious crooks chair. Because the, the, the shortage they normally create every year is artificial. It has never been real. It is, um, it is for their own benefit. That is the same shortage they are using to, 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 hike, up, to, to hike the prices of, uh, of, uh, of the same uh, maize. Uh, chair, it is upon us in the, in the, uh, as members of this committee plus the ministry to, to ensure that we put in place regulations that are going to regulate the millers so that we protect farm, uh, farmers and uh, take care of the interest of the consumers. Thank you. Yeah, Chair. Yeah, chair uh, Please, we, uh, we need to, to cross I, this. I, I know, Chair, you want to yeah. ask to end up. But, Chair. Yeah, last one. Since the CS and the TS has confirmed the, 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 the nation that the subsidized price now they will pay at 3,600. 3,600 chair. Chair, would I be in order? Chair, chair, I don't know if you're listening to me. Chair, if that's the standard that they have set that they will subsidize all the importers including the, uh, the, 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 the so-called farmers and uh, traders at 3,600. Chair, would I be in order to know how much did they subsidize the following millers? The whole bird, I want to know, because they have already imported, how much did you subsidize them? I want to know how much did you subsidize Pembe? I want to know how much did you subsidize Kitui Miller. I want to know how much did you subsidize, this is called what, hydrapi, hydrapi. 
And I want to know how much did you uh, subsidize uh, Stanwave Millers by tabling that agreement of subsidy if it is not 4,300? Because we have the sources. And if you want to challenge me, just table it down how much you subsidize it before the committee by the end of today, then I'll be able to believe that what you are telling Kenya, that your subsidy is at 3,600, then I would apologize if you'd be able to bring all this documentation. Because we know for sure. Why is it that it is open-ended for each and everyone to bring maize in this country? And yet these few people that I've mentioned are the ones who had their maize on the high, what we call them, high seas. They had their maize on the high seas. No one was informed, but as, as soon as you, you declare something, the maze was in Mombasa at 4,300. I want to see that documentation, Chair. Well, I think, I, 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 order, 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 order. I think, I, I think, I think for the purpose of record, I think let's, 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 let's deal with one thing at a time. I think if you go to window period and then he has asked a question, I think it's mixing up. Let's, let's, let's follow up one question. Yeah, we, 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 I'll come to that one. Something to follow up plus the, uh, the, the quantities, plus the quantities in each meal, in each meal. Yeah, plus the quantities. Oh, 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 two thousand. Oh, oh, That's what is the negative statement. Two thousand bucks. How much do these people are allowed to bring a, a whole seat load? <laughs> okay, honourable minister, I think let's move to the, the importation because uh, I think you explained who imported, how was it imported. What is the government role? At what stage do you subsidize? How much did you subsidize and at what cost? Because now, Honorable Owut is talking about subsidy of 3,600. I think that is the price. That is the price of the maize, not the subsidy. So let's be very clear. I think let's not mix up issues. That price of the maize is 3,600, and the maize has said subsidized 1,300 for them to sell at 2,300 to reduce the price for the consumers to nine, 90 shillings per 2 kg bucks. So let's, let's, let's understand and let's not misunderstand the whole thing and then maybe let me we, we, we the whole patient. So let's become clear, start, start with the element of now importation, specifically the, the sheet that has arrived, and then we move to how you intend to sustain that. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Chairman. It is very important that we clear this, um, the, this uh, issue, Chairman. Um, the ship that has arrived is just a man and it arrived after waiving duty for a whole one month. That ship arrived after we waived the duty for millers and everybody to import mail. Just, just to be specific, Honorable Minister, just say we, the gazette notice dated is this date yes. and the ship arrived in this date so that at least and people Kenyans can understand you because just be specific and move to the war to, 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 to the The gazette notice, yeah. notice is on the 10th of okay. April. From the end of April up to Friday last week when the ship came, I mean anybody who is serious in doing business must have had enough time to bring. In fact, for us, even as government, we had, we had anticipated that in one month that the imported maize would arrive in this country. As we speak now, we know there are other ships which are coming, but it looks like they are even logistical. We should have received even most of the uh, maize by now. So it is not like um, the ship appeared three days as I hear in some quarters after the Gazette notice. It was actually that at the notice, we have circulated it, the notice of waiver was on the 13th of April. Between the 13th of April and the of That's enough, yeah. Minister, if uh, you have given that, that, that period could be enough for anybody to bring Maize. To, bring, to bring maize to this country. Yeah, from, yes. from, from 13th April is when the Gazette notice, the waiver was given on 13th April, yes. and the first maize has arrived around 13th of May. That's one, the period of one month. Yeah, so at least it is not, I think, uh, that uh, somebody just brought in the day that uh, the Gazette notice was fixed. So exactly. That one must be clear. That uh, no, Kenya need to, to leave his lead. Yeah. yeah. But we will challenge that. And it is only specific millers who have this knowledge to have them bring the maid order on the order, 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 order was hearing, order was hearing, order was hearing. I think Kenya, Kenya Gazette notice is not, is not a secret to anybody. It's an, op, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an open document. Let's be very, let's be very sincere. But uh, Honorable Minister, just to move on to explain 
what is it that at least the government intervention between the miller and the importer just give that 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 that, 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 that. thank you thank you chair, chair you, i think to be brief chair let me maybe come in chair i have asked this issue of subsidy can we be told what informs that amount that amount per bag that amount that the government has to meet and uh, who is the beneficiary? Thank you. Okay. Is, uh, tell us that because this is no, on, the, on the road. Mm -hmm. I think let's know what the government needs first of all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are jumping the gun. What is the government meeting in terms of subsidy? So that at least we can come to what informs that or, um, amount of subsidy. Then I think let's now let, let me begin. Allow me to respond to these questions. Yeah. The person the government is subsidizing is the consumer. Knowing that we have also been subsidizing the producers. We have been subsidizing farmers with fertilizer. In a situation where the prices of flour is going up, I mean the government has the right to subsidize the consumer as well, because they are also Kenyans. So what we are doing is we realized at this point in time we want the consumer to access two kilogram flour at 90 shillings. That is how we worked out the, the, the subsidy. How then can we facilitate the farmer, no, the consumer, to access this flour at 90 shillings? It therefore means we need to know how, how much will 90 kilogram back cost the miller so that they can avail the, 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 the flour at 90 shillings. Because as we speak now, in the market, the cost of 90 kilograms is going at 4,200, 4,100. In some cases, it was even 4,600. And that is the reason why it had pushed the prices to 150 shillings per two kilogram back. But here is a situation where we want the consumer to pay 90 shillings. That was the beginning point. Now, we had opened, we wait duty for the private sector to bring in, um, to bring in grain. By the time they were bringing in, if you leave it like that, even the tube itself could not benefit the farmer. Because what would prevent an importer to come and sell their grain at the same 4,100, 4,200? Nothing would stop them. We would have allowed them to import and still continue selling. That is why government had to come in and say, Aziri, we have to be sure. Aziri, just, just tell us, this ship which came in, the price that the importer was selling was this much to the meters. The subsidy to the millers is this much, and, and total cost. Uh, this subsidy also costs the, the taxpayers this much. Exactly. I think the, just uh, be specific on this so matter, the so, so that we can be very clear. Uh, All right. The importers imported maize at whatever price they wanted, and they wanted to take advantage of the situation. Right. So how have you intervened and really assisted the situation, so that at least we can get the 90 shillings per 2 kg? Thank you, Chair. The, the, the ship which has stopped now had grain which had already been signed by millers. The ship which came had, had, had contracts with millers, which is Pembe. Point of order, Chair. Can we just even have, for example, uh, the Kitui millers? They have just you know, released their mace. Could you just use that as an example? How much they paid for this mace? How much did the, gov the gov government subsidize? Yes, How sir. much did you pay? I'm explaining. Yeah. Just take it to Millers. I know they have already talked. In no, no, just for example, ship. Chair, just to get us. Just an example. Yeah, just an example for Kitui Millers or. Order, 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 order. Okay. But well, really, I think, uh, let's not pick on a specific, uh, because if it is specific, if they, are, if, they, if they vary, no, if they vary from one miller to the other, then he will tell us. But uh, if it is just across the board that is a policy that you are subsidizing this much, there's no reason why we should pick on, on, it, on it is across the board, yeah. including the two emailers, including Pempe, including anybody who had signed up for that ship. Yeah, please just, just explain that. The ship which came had uh, uh, 29,000 metric tons of grain. And inside, uh, among the various millers who were supposed to take it up, they had signed contracts with the importer so that they could take it up. And what we realized is some of the contracts which had been signed was for 400, 4,100 uh, shillings per 90 kilogram back. In some others, they had signed 3,400 uh, shillings. 
So what we did is because it was not our crop, our uh, cargo. Point of order, chair. We came in now chair, so that we could subsidize. Point of order, chair. So that we go systematically. Who was the importer? Just tell us. So and so has imported this much, and this is what the subsidy is as follows. So if, we don't if, go back if you again. bear with me, chair, I had proposed that the CS tabled the documentation of all these importers before the end of the day if you want to challenge my subsidy of what they have, they, they have been telling Kenyans. They to tell you that what they have subsidized is even more than what they are telling us now. So that's why I'm proposing, Chair, somebody should second, that by the end of the day, all these importers that are mentioned, they should table the document before this committee. So then we scrutinize and know exactly how the taxpayers have paid for this. We will table, Chairman. We have, the end of the day, chair. We have so all the documents. It is, this thing has been done above board, Chairman. It has been by the, by in the ministerial committee, so there's nothing. We will table the documents. Uh, I wish we had come with it. We'll table it in the, even this afternoon. Chair, given that, I think I would as a point to save you the agony of explaining. Bring the table, uh, the, the documents. We we'll look at them and we'll ask you so that if there are some questions that we have, I think it's quite right. We'll ask you later on. Can you do that? Yeah. If yes. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, I, I don't uh, intend to disagree. With what no, what document you have, by the way, yes. because you are not an importer. Don't worry, don't worry. But give yes. us, give us. Yes, I just wanted to make a, I just want to make one or two comments. No, no, I, I, yeah. have to worry. I, have, I have think to uh, one thing I wanted to say, Chair, is that uh, I, I just want to beg for your indulgence uh, that uh, let's not condemn uh, no, uh, all millers in this country. I think uh, not all of them are criminals. Not them, all of them are crooks. I think the truth of the matter is we have got big millers and we have got small millers. Some of them are honest Kenyans who actually struggle, you know, to actually create wealth and make themselves, you know, powerful. Sure, sure. But it's an issue because that issue has been raised, yes. and I think I want to correct yes. it. Yes, I think. Excuse me. Order, 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 order. I think. I think. Order, yes, order, I order, think, yes. order, 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 because you uh, get things to be getting, uh, don't, don't, there's nothing to get uh, hungry about. Okay. If, yeah. if, yeah. if we are angry, the Kenyans are hungry, and this is what you're trying to be. It's not a personal issue, it's not a personal issue. Personal because my grandma cannot be able to buy your gun. Uh, I hope we are all here for, for, to represent the people, the gentlemen. I think let's be honest. I think, uh, I think uh, Honorable Ota has asked for a specific, very pertinent question of. I challenge you to produce a document that at least whatever price you have subsidized is not 36, but it is 4,100. I think that's a very specific thing. What is out of order? I think the, C the PS must withdraw about the protecting uh, the millers. Every Kenya knows that majority or most of them are crooks. They are the reason why we have high prices and farmers have a low pay. You, I think it's the wrong person to defend uh, uh, millers. Millers are, are the ones who have created all these artificial uh, shortages. And uh, that is the reason why we were proposing to make regulations that are going to protect Kenyans in terms of regulating the millers from uh, artificial... Uh, order, order. I think, I, I think the PS has not protected, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Has yes. not protected the millers. Yes, yeah, that's the that only yeah. issue that you are saying yes. is not all the millers are crooks. And don't condemn in totality, that's the word he used. And I'm sure that not everybody who is in meeting is crooks. They may, be, they may be always in any human, they are crooks who are there. So please, let's not crucify the, the peers for that purpose because you. Honorable Uta, Honorable Uta, please, just, uh, you, can, you, can move, you can move the way you guys are wanting to prosecute this matter. No, 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 
of the exporter. How much did he sold to the to the to the to the to the, to the, to the millers? And what are you subsidizing? We cannot even allow the minister in the CS to just to tell us that. You, you, you know it. So uh, can we can we say just bring the bring the document and then we stop it there? No, no, but talk. Honorable Chair. 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 Can you just read the Honorable Chair. 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 Honorable just tell the minister which document you want from him, because I don't know which documents you want. Yes, Just tell him. How, how much do you want me to repeat? I say it for all the importers, the importers that have mentioned their name. We want all those documentations to come before this committee before the end of the day, so that Kenyan can know how much were they subsidized, how much have they paid, and will this bring the price of unga for Wanjiku to have a cheap unga um, at their homes? This is what we are asking. But he cannot come here and try to uh, tell us or tell Kenyans that they know that this is how much they are paid. The PS has already told Kenyans that now they are buying it at 3,600. And this what I'm challenging is not at 3,600. They are paid more money to the millers in terms of subsidy. And they want to pay 3,000 to our farmers. No, I, 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 I only need you to tell us, give us the, the bill of landing, give us the invoice. Give us, the, give us the cash sale. I want you to tell the PS, give us these documents. Like, which documents do you want from him? Because all, all that including a change, which one? the importation, the declaration, the subsidy from the government. How much did they pay? How much did this miller import the maize? If it is like they said 4,300, how much did they subsidize? In total, how much did they pay these millers? And how have they come to calculate now our farmers within our country? would now be paid at 3,600. How did they reach to that figure? Yet the miller is getting over 6,000 from the taxpayers. Just, uh, order, order, just please. Let's put, let's put things correct. I don't know where... where the subsidy chair, plus what they have said, they have already said here that some of these millers negotiated 4,100 per bag. You just said now. You just said now. Can we bring the order? You just said it. You just said it now. Order now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And now, if you add 4,100, 4, how much did you subsidize this one? Uh, I mean, uh, 90 kgs of of, of 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 maize. If you add that money, how much does it? Conclu I mean, come to in, in a total of. Uh, of, uh, of buying one one ninety kg. Okay. That's okay. what I want, Mr. Okay. Mr. Chair, okay. so that I know how did they arrived at paying our farmers at three thousand six hundred now. Are the millers are the one to benefit? Do, do, I, I, I want the minister to explain so that you put questions. Chair, chair, no, no. chair. I think as far as I'm concerned, excuse me, chair. Uh, I think uh, my brother has asked by the question. We have all agreed. That give the ministry time. Uh, we don't want because they don't have the figures now. They don't have the documents. Why do what we want to do now? Hold your horses. Let's let's then give the ministry time. Refer it this afternoon. Tomorrow we can have a meeting. We are here. We can go through whatever papers they've got. If you have queries, we'll ask them. I mean, there's no way they are going to have the figures right now. Because I at, they were not prepared for it. So, Chair, I think on that one, let's close the chapter, move to another subject. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, you'll notice this Gazette notice is signed. Oh, we have to go to Gazette notice. Yes, yes, no, no, no. I just wrote what he's saying. But please finish. Just finish one thing at a time. Yes, yes, that's what I'm coming to. That's what I'm coming to. Because, what? because you want votes from us. You are not in a no, 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 Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I do agree what has been 
I do agree. Order, order, order. I do agree what has been proposed, Mr. Chairman. The documentation the minister is requested to produce, part of it is not owned by his office, and this is by information provided in this Kenya Gazette, Mr. Chairman. And this Kenya Gazette is owned by one, Elio Rotich, the cabinet secretary for national pressure. It is not owned by this cabinet secretary, Mr. Chairman. And therefore, we could be dealing with the wrong cabinet secretary. What is the connection? How will you tie this particular cabinet secretary to be able to produce these documents? Otherwise, what we are doing is in vain and is a nullity. I think to some extent, honorable members, importers are private entity. And the documents that in possession of the minister, unless he calls from them now, it's not that issue that is in his possession. Some of us, are, 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 all of you know how business are done. So, you're, you're telling him, whatever maybe we, we can do is, how much has he subsidized? I don't know, I don't know in terms of payment, yeah, yeah, and in terms of payment, how do they pay? Order, 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 hey, order, order, minister. What you want you, what you want from you, if you can be able to access, Tomorrow, well, it, 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 it's possible tomorrow, tomorrow is Friday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Members will not be there on Tuesday. Yeah, they are, for, it will, uh, for uh, this pre nomination. IEBC pre nomination. Yeah, I think, uh, anyway, anyway, it is good to give you time. What? Yes, yes, no, yes, my. Uh, I just want to put some information from the CS. Because when he was uh, taking us through his presentation, he said that he normally gives the farmers information of how much a price of bag goes. Which mechanism do you use? Do you go on radio? Do you put it on the newspaper? Because most farmers do not know those prices you're talking about. How do you, do you gazette it? Because the farmers, okay, Mwishmuwa Wanyonyi maybe is privileged to, to be talking to you, that uh, you have been trying to buy his, uh, his, uh, his maize. What about my farmer who is in the village and does not even know? Who does not know even... Uh, which mechanism do you use? And then for the Kenyans out there, uh, Buena CS, they are worried that this maize came. They hear it is yellow. Can you confirm to all the Kenyans that that maize is not GMO? Two issues. One, well, what is the mechanism that you use to inform the farmers? And then what is the, what is the quality of the maize that has, has been asking? Right, let me answer very fast. The, 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 when we buy, the only price we announce to the farmers is what we, we buy for uh, national um, food reserve. Uh, we put it in the papers when we open our cereal stores and we tell farmers we are now receiving uh, maize from you at this price. And that is why we advertised the 3,000 in December when we, we started buying. So if we normally announce and the quality of the maize which came is, that is the reason why I, when I know I have been asked why I went, I just went there to confirm the quality. I didn't go to receive any maize. I went to confirm the quality to ensure that what Kenyans is going to consume is of, 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 of high quality. So it is not yellow, it is white maize. I confirm it meets the standards for consumption in Kenya. It is not GMO. Chair on a point of order. Chair. Chair on a point of order. I just want that clarification from the CS. Since when did you turn to the Kenya Bureau of Standards? Because you are, you are a CS. Order, 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 because we know order, it, order, in this, order, in order, case. Yeah. The uh, oh, thank you, thank you, Chairman, and uh, uh, thank you for steering this, com uh, this meeting. Chair, I am disturbed eh, because uh, we now have a new constitution which actually gives uh, two governments, both uh, county and national government different functions in as far as agriculture is concerned. I have heard from the CS talking about seed. I have also heard him before talking about fertilizer. Uh, could he be specific up to where uh, his function reaches? Because uh, uh, what we understand about matters of production is actually supposed to be county yes. government business. Uh, could he be contributing to part of the confusion? Because if he is talking about seed, if he is uh, if he is talking about seed, then what would the county government be pro uh, uh, providing? Because uh, I am realizing that uh, we are getting ourselves into some confused system, uh, chair. Yes. Okay. Uh, 
interpretation. I think uh, that's a lapse of function, but nevertheless, still, when you still supplement the, the, the counties with, with fertilizer, with seeds, and with uh, uh, mechanization and tractors and those things, I think we, we should complain that what, what happened even after you have done all those things, rather than maybe, we cannot be able to specifically maybe sort out the, 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 the functions of the two levels of government at this juncture. But really, what happened, because yours was supplement to what the county should have done. And that's why uh, the first time raised maybe our problems also partly is with the devolution issue that no connection between the national and the county government in terms of mostly the resource allocation. That's my concern. Even in this aspect of uh, subsidies. These are issues that could have been played by the county. Even the applied those who have uh, brought in the seeds and those things. But now, with all those supplements that you have given, I don't complain that why we supplement the counties. Because with all those supplements, we are still in where we are. So, what is the, what, 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 what is the issue be, uh, between the two levels of government in terms of, uh, of production? Um, Chair, I know it is very clear what is supposed to be undertaken at the county level and at the national level. But things which are cross cutting, the kind of priority one county would place in agriculture will be different from what another county would do. So, the national objective is to increase productivity. And the best way to increase productivity is to ensure that we supplement farmers on their inputs. And that is why the national government has continued to, across the board, increase productivity in the country, not in a particular county, but across the country, by subsidizing fertilizer. That is actually the reason why, with the relationship between the national government and the counties, we will agree whether that responsibility should, should how we are going to devolve it and then um, the counties would Chair, uh, point of order, Chair. Chair, yeah. um, we seem to be moving backwards, forward, but just like a pendulum. I don't know what we, we what do we come to discuss? Let's wait for the documentation. Yes. Chair, we are now getting, I, I personally am lost. Yeah. Now we have gone back to production. Yeah. Yeah. And what are we, uh, Chair? Yeah. It's important, but uh, that's this one, order, 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 order. That's, that's important, but that should have been the beginning. Yeah. We, we, we should have started from production, from, and then we come to consumption, and then we come to importation. But then, now we are, we are mixed up with the way on the you are correct, I think. I think, honorable members, there are two issues. One is we have to get a written statement from the minister, including the documentation that we require. Then we produce and look at those documents. Or we ask the minister to explain, and then we interrogate him. There are those two, only those two ways about it. But if you want us to allow the minister to go away, just document whatever he has, give us the tabulations of those figures that Honorable Teren is, is asking, go technically to his people, technical people, and get us all those details, and give us a written statement on, on this matter. Are we in agreement? Yes. Then can we stop there and close the meeting? Yes. Then the meeting is done at Jan. Minister, one is this. Tuesday is, is I think, uh, the minister, uh, there, there are something in the, with IEBC and the members in their constituencies. So I really don't know. So we, we make it on one is this. What is it? Let me request, let me request at that stage. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, yes, my uh, peace. Let me hear from you. Thank you, Chair. You have, uh, I know you have adjourned the meeting. I just wanted to request that uh, I should not be taken and see if I was actually defending any Miller. I think I think that should come out very clear. What, yeah, yes, what, yes, yeah. So I think uh, I just wanted to, to mention that. I think my position was is that uh, we have also, you know, our local millers. We have our local millers in Netherlands. We have our local millers all over. And these are the people we are also participating. So I just wanted to, I just wanted to, thank you, Chair. Yeah. Order, 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 yes, uh, please. Order, 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 order man. Oda, you are almost going down to the meeting. Oda, Oda, I will stop this meeting for now. Uh, I wish I could have given the minister an opportunity maybe to have a closing remark, but uh, uh, next, next, next time we are going to do that because I think the members are tired. Seems uh, somebody like a hotel is becoming. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we meet on Wednesday, Wednesday morning. Is that okay with you?
That's the chairman I'm requesting that. Thursday morning? Yeah. The morning is okay. Okay, fine. Then we meet on Thursday. Next week. Next week, yeah? Yes.